In this video, we'll take a look at the temperature dependence of the enthalpy of reaction. Okay, so standard enthalpy of reaction is the change in enthalpy of a chemical reaction that occurs under standard conditions. IUPAC recommends using a pressure equal to one bar for standard pressure. Enthalpy of reaction can be calculated from the enthalpies of formation for the reactants and products. Okay, so in terms of the symbol, we have a delta H to represent enthalpy change, a superscript circle to represent standard conditions, although sometimes this is replaced with a superscript plimsoll, a subscript T for the temperature at which this is happening, and a subscript R to signify that this is the enthalpy change for a reaction. Okay, so the general form of a chemical reaction that we're going to use to think about this is shown here. So we have the reactants and the products, and then we have the stoichiometric coefficients for each component, and then we have the chemical formula for each component. So this is just a very generic form that we have. Now the stoichiometric coefficients for the products are positive because they're being created through the reaction and the stoichiometric coefficients for the reactants are negative because they're being destroyed or consumed through the reaction. So if we want to calculate the enthalpy of reaction, we can use this idea and actually have this, uh, chemical, uh, this mathematical equation, delta H R, the enthalpy change of reaction equals the sum of the stoichiometric coefficient multiplied by the delta H of formation. So you do that for each component. So if we look at this, um, it's the enthalpy of reaction, and then we've got the enthalpy of formation. Um, so delta H R, we've got the stoichiometric coefficient for the first uh, reactant multiplied by its heat of formation. And then we just keep adding on these terms for all of the reactants and all of the products and any other terms that we have there. Okay. So let's have a look at an example. So here we have CH4 reacting with H2O to form CO and 3H2. So this is steam reforming of methane. And uh, let's just remember that stoichiometric coefficients for reactants are negative. So we have stoichiometric coefficient for methane is minus one, for water is minus one, and then stoichiometric coefficients for products are positive. So for carbon monoxide, that's positive one, and for hydrogen, that is positive three. We also have some values that we can look up for the enthalpies of formation for these components, and then we can put these into the equation. So this is all at 298 Kelvin, and so we can put these start to put these values in. So for the methane, we have minus one multiplied by minus 74520 and then we just continue to add these on for the different components. So there we have the values for water, the values for carbon monoxide and the values for hydrogen. If we work all of this out, we've now got the delta H, the enthalpy change uh, of reaction for this water, for, sorry, for, for the water reacting with methane in this steam reforming and it comes to 205813 joules per mole. And we've just calculated these from values that we can look up in tables. So in terms of temperature dependence, we have this equation, delta H reaction at temperature two, that's the temperature of interest, depends on the enthalpy of reaction at the reference temperature T1, and then we need to do this integration with the heat capacity change when the reaction takes place. Okay, so what is this change in heat capacity? Well, we need to use this equation here, delta Cp equals the sum of the Cps for each component multiplied by the stoichiometric coefficient. And if we expand that out, we get delta Cp equals stoichiometric coefficient of component one multiplied by the Cp of that, 
stoichiometric coefficient of component 2 multiplied by its CP and so on. Now the CP for each component is often given in this form in, in various tables that you can look up uh, the values for these. It's CP divided by R and that equals A plus BT plus CT squared plus DT to the minus 2. So we can look up values of A, B, C and D for various components. And if we want to get the delta value, we simply need to get delta A, delta B, delta C and delta D uh, using the individual stoichiometric coefficients and the individual values for A, B, C and D. OK, so coming back to temperature dependence, then we have the equation here um, and we've got the delta CP here for with delta A, delta B, delta C and delta D. If we just put that temperature dependence equation into the form where we've got delta CP divided by R, we can then combine those two equations. We can do the integration and then we can come up with a final equation that tells us the temperature dependence of our enthalpy of reaction based on knowing the enthalpy of reaction at the reference temperature, knowing the changes, the delta A, delta B, delta C, delta D values, and that will then allow us to calculate the enthalpy of reaction at T2, the temperature that we're actually interested in. So just summarising all of this, we've got the equation. Cp is in the form of Cp divided by R equals A plus Bt plus Ct squared plus D T to the minus 2. And then we've got the stoichiometric coefficients being used to get delta A, delta B, delta C and delta D. So that's been a video about the temperature dependence of enthalpy of reaction. I hope you found that useful. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe and thanks very much for watching.